Let's build it. Well, you know the drill. Let's get our circle into the scene here, any number of segments you want, and let's extrude it inwards. I'll bring that loop up just a touch and extrude a new loop up and over. Right now, we're just going to be developing the base geometry for the hat, so I'm not really looking for perfection here. It's said that life isn't a race, it's a marathon. However, I can definitely assure you that the blockout stage is a race. I'm trying to get it done as fast as possible. As we get closer to the tip, we're going to want to scale our circles down and make sure that their rotation is A OK. The rotation at this part is what's going to cause you the most pain, so pay some attention to that. Once we have something that resembles a hat, let's go ahead and add our Make It Look Good modifier, formerly known as the Subsurf mod. So now we have this French horn tuba looking thing. Probably going to need to bevel this loop down here to give some distinction to the hat, help separate things up a little bit. Well, still looking a little horny. Uh, that came out wrong. Still looking a little bit like a horn, but we're going to fix that in just a sec. First, let's close out the tip of the cap. You can do this a hundred ways, but I decided to extrude in a new loop and use the grid fill option under the face panel to close the gap. I'll turn on simple blending and change the offset until the grid is running straight up and down. I'll also pull out the grid a little bit using proportional editing just to round it out too. Let's add a strap to the hat, as is custom with common mage attire. Old men with an affinity for leather straps, I'm just saying. To start the strap, I'll add a cut onto our hat and select the face ring, duplicate it, and separate it. I'll scale it out along the normals and add a solidify mod to give it some weight. I'll also add a loop cut and bevel it out towards the edges to help sharpen everything up. You can spend more time on it, but since it's just a leather strap, of which I have no affinity towards, I'm going to opt for the lazy route. Buckles, on the other hand, are my bread and butter. Can't go wrong with a sturdy buckle. Tie buckles, ratchet buckles, cam buckles, heck, I even love slide and snap buckles. Roller buckles, though, they can at me. No time for rollers. To start our buckle, let's pull our default cube out of retirement for one last job. We'll have to squish it on the y-axis, I'll add a cut on the left side, and bevel another cut on the interior so that we can get rid of those faces. I'll fill the gaps and add a subsurf mod as well as a bevel mod. We will make sure that our bevel mod is the first one in the stack, and change it to have two segments at an amount of around 0.02 meters. This will sharpen our rounded corners. From there, I'll add a cylinder, get rid of the top and bottom engons, and slide it into the perfect spot and size for our buckle. I'll quickly parent that to make sure I only need to move our buckle from one place. We're also going to need to create the clasp, which I'll make out of a plane. I'll rotate it on the x-axis, slide it into position, and extrude out towards the y-axis. Definitely a simpler model, but when it's as small as it's going to be, no sense in spending too much time on it. I'll also parent this to the buckle, and now we just need to scale it all the way down and give it a nice snug position. I'll also rotate it slightly on the z-axis to give the illusion that this strap is buckled in, but you and I both know that's a con. You know what time it is? It's cloth time, Mr. Wolf! Before we can start with the uber cool cloth stuff, we need to prepare our mesh. First, we'll need to improve the profile of the hat. I'll increase the subsurf to 4 and apply it. The next part is a little hacky, but because we're going to remesh it, we need to completely enclose our mesh. Otherwise, we're going to get this. Yeah, that kind of sucks, right? So, I'll select the bottom ring and hit F to simply fill it. It's really as easy as that. We will remove that face in about two seconds as well. I'll head over to the sculpt and press Shift R to pull up our voxel remesh visualizer. We're going to want pretty small voxels, and I normally hit around 0 0.01. I'll make sure to smooth our normals, and let's remesh. Now that we have our prepped geometry, how the heck are we going to remove all these faces, right? Well, simply select one face, and hitting Shift G, I'll be able to select similar. I'll choose coplanar, which is going to select this entire bottom plane, and nothing more. Delete those faces, and we're pretty much back to normal. Now, let's start masking off areas. I'll use the box mask to select the bottom and top pieces, leaving the center area completely untouched. I'll make sure to smooth out transitions between these areas as well to get some softer fall off. 
I'll also add some straight mask lines downwards to separate each face more into its own pocket. That'll make sense in about a second here. Now let's go ahead and select the cloth filter. And I've changed mine to be the inflate tool with a mass of two and a damping of 0.1. As I click and drag outwards towards the right, the simulation will play with inflation occurring positively. Changing the strength can also help fine tune how severe these simulations are. I'll then use the expand option, changing the strength down to 0.1. I'll jockey my mouse left and right to simulate in both the positive and negative directions to have the cloth fall to something I like. This is all really just playing around with it until it looks good. Now let's mask off that area and reveal the rest of the top of the hat. We'll want to smooth out these transitions as well. And with the cloth filter, let's use the expand option again. Just jockeying our mouse cursor back and forth as the simulation plays to find something we like. And now that we have that, I went back and updated our earlier folds to look a little bit more creased. Finally, let's use the cloth brush this time to pinch out the tip of the hat. I'll select the pinch point option with a radial fall off and just manipulate the tip ever so slightly. That's what she said. The brim of the hat is all that's left now and it's not too tough since we're kind of comfortable with the cloth filter. I'll mask off the rest of the hat and now with the cloth filter, I'll use the pinch option first. This will pinch based on the location of your cursor, so make sure you have it in the center of your mesh. I'll pinch out and in until I get some softer creases, and then I'll stop the pinch. Then I'll inflate it up to round off the cloth ends, and then finally use the gravity option to bring it all down just slightly. Now I'm just gonna run through our mesh with a standard grab brush to make sure there's no intersecting geometry, and I'm pretty happy with the sculpting by this point. Let's add some materials to this now. Make it look a little more magical. For the hat material, I'll add a checker texture to be the albedo color. I'll add a mapping node as well, because we're going to adjust these squares. First, I'll change the scale of the checker to be around 0.4. I found this to be a good scale, but now all of our squares are gone. What the heck? In our mapping node, let's change the X location to be 2 meters, which will cut down our model through the center. Another cool thing we can do is change the Z location to split the hat vertically as well. So now when we play around with the colors of the checker, we're going to get some adjacent patterns with very simple controls. I'll also go ahead and increase the roughness, decrease the specular, and bump up the sheen all the way to give us that fabric look. For the strap, I'll use a dark brown color to start. I'll also add a Voronoi texture to be used for our normal value. I'll plug it through a bump node since we really only need simple values and set the intensity to be 0.1. I'll change the scale to be 7.3 and type to be distance to edge. Because of the stretching on the X and the Y axis, I'll also scale both up to 6 so we can make everything less distorted. That'll offer a little bumpiness to replicate leather. Finally, I'll plug the Voronoi into our roughness and use a map range node to determine the range of our values. Now, the buckle is a pretty simple material, as I only want it to be a shiny metal. So, I'll bring the metallic up to 1, and then I'll fiddle with the roughness value to get something that's between a mirror and concrete. To finish off our model, I want to add some weight to it so that it's not just paper thin. Let's use a solidify modder to sort that out but we'll soon notice that it goose up at the edges. So let's add a smooth modifier before our solidify to try and relax our vertices first. You don't want to go too far with the smooth as it starts to do the opposite of that. However, a value of around one to two should work best for this. Well, that's what it took me to make a mage's hat. I hope my character likes it. Thanks to everybody that voted on this week's video and don't forget to vote on the next one down in our community tab. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more of this Blender content. And as always, I've been Chunk. This has been Let's Build It in Blender. Later, skater. What type of mage uses pastries to seduce people? A pyromancer. Come on, I thought long and hard on that one. The least you can do is laugh at it. Why did the mage retire? Because he had a staff infection. Get it? Because they have staff. Don't, don't worry about it.